Okay, if you're watching this video and you're in my grade 8 math class, you're probably uh, at home right now, the night before your test, which is tomorrow, panicking because you're not sure how to model uh, fraction operations. But don't fear. If you understand these five questions that I'm about to do with you, you will do swimmingly on your test tomorrow. The first question says 3 quarters times 2. And the way we model that is very simple. We have to draw 3 quarters, which up until now we've always used beautiful rectangles and colored it in. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is what three quarters of an object looks like. And if I double it, which is multiplying it by two, all I have to do is draw it twice. Now, if you think back to 6-1 when we did this question, the question you have to ask yourself to get the answer is, how many quarters do I have in total? So before I actually do any work, I'm going to put this down because I know I'm really counting how many quarters there are. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six quarters, which is my solution as an improper fraction. As a mixed fraction, it is one and two quarters. And as a mixed fraction in lowest terms, it's one and a half. Now, what I advise you all to do on your test when you have the modeling part is just have a little area here and you put in the check. Check my work. So you go three quarters multiplied by two or two over one equals six over four which equals one and a half. So when you check your work using an actual algorithm, that's the work you would probably show to prove that you were indeed correct with your modeling. So your next question is three-fifths divided by two, which is very similar to the chocolate bar question that we did with uh, the plane crash. You will start by drawing three-fifths, and I drew this very poorly, so I'll have to start again. One, two, three, four. Shade in three-fifths as such. Now, if I'm dividing it between two people, divide it right down the middle and just put two names here. I'm going to put my name and my wife's name. And we're going to share that three-fifths of a chocolate bar equally. What's my denominator right now after I make that cut? It's ten. There are ten parts. And how many pieces of chocolate do I get? Three-tenths. So if you have... Uh, three-fifths divided between two people, the answer is six-tenths. Now, another way to think of it, and we talked about this before, if three-fifths as a percentage is 60%, and if I just briefly think to myself, is 60% divided by two 30%? Yeah, so then, therefore, my answer as a fraction makes sense because that is also uh, 30%. If you wanted to check your work, the word check up here, Three-fifths divided by two, divided by two is the same thing as three-fifths multiplied by the reciprocal of two, which is one-half. And when I multiply that, I end up getting three-tenths, my answer. Our third question says two-fifths times three-quarters. Now, does anyone have a hint for how somebody who struggles with this question could always get the right answer if they do this every time? What would you say? What I would suggest is you read it as the word of. So if I say two-fifths, instead of saying multiplied by, say of, because these are really the same thing. Two-fifths of three-quarters. If I write that down, it's pretty hard for me to screw this up. Because I'm going to say two-fifths of three-quarters. I'll draw my three-quarters. I wish I had a bigger marker. I wonder if I could change the size of my marker. Yes, I can. I can go actually bigger. Look at that. So three quarters. Well, that's much better. That is three quarters. Now, I want to keep two fifths of it. So I'm going to cut it into five parts. Four cuts doth five parts make. And I'm going to keep how much of it? How many fifths? Two fifths, which is one check mark and two check marks. So what is my denominator after I make said cuts? There are now 20 total parts to that chocolate bar. And how many parts do I get? Six twentieths. Is that lowest terms? No. So in lowest terms, my answer is three tenths. Check your solution. And that's really easy. This is the easy one to check your solution because all you have to do is multiply your numerators to get six over twenty, which equals three over ten. So my answer is correct. My drawing is correct. Your fourth question gives you a mixed fraction multiplied by a fraction. And for all mixed fraction multiplication modeling, we are going to use what type of model? 
it's called an area model. So we shall make an area of a rectangle. My mixed fraction will be broken up into two parts. From this dot to this dot will be the whole number of one. And from this dot to this dot will be the fractional part, three quarters. So if you can visualize it, that red line's total length would be one and three quarters. Everyone agree? If I put two thirds over here, then this total length is going to be two thirds. And we know from our experience with rectangles that area is length times width. But rather than do the entire length of one and three quarters, I'm going to break it up into two smaller parts, into an A area and a B area. And A plus B will equal the total area of the rectangle. So therefore, the length of A is one and the width is two thirds. The length of B is three quarters and the width is two thirds. So if I figure out what each of those answers are and add them together, that should be equal to the entire product of one and three quarters times two thirds. So one times two thirds is easy because multiplying by one just keeps itself. If I do this one, you could get six over 12, but when you cross reduce, that becomes one over one, that becomes one over two. When I do that, I get my answer of a half for that. And A plus B will equal the total area, or two thirds plus one half will equal the total area. What's my common denominator? That's right, it is six. Four sixths plus three sixths when adding. Add your numerators and keep your denominator. My final answer is seven sixths, which is one and one sixth as a mixed fraction. Okay, how to check my answer? Let's do a check over here, check. So it's one and three quarters multiplied by two thirds, which is seven quarters multiplied by two thirds, which is 14 over 12, which is one and two twelfths, which in lowest terms, it's one and one sixth. So for the last question, we have a mixed fraction times a mixed fraction. And when we have mixed fractions in our uh, product, we're going to use an area model. This will be two and three quarters. This will be one and one half. Here we have four composite areas that make up the entire area. What's the length and width of A? Two times one. What's the length and width of B? One times three quarters or three quarters times one. The length of C, one half doubled. And the length of E is one half times three quarters. This should be easy because I think three of them are going to be really easy. What's two times one? There's your area of A. What's three quarters times one? Just three quarters. What's one half doubled? Just one. And finally, the last one, what's one half times two? What's one half times three quarters? Three eighths. Am I done yet? No, because now I have to add the sections together. Now, the commutative property and the associative property of mathematics says the order in which you add or, add or multiply does not affect the product or sum. So if it doesn't matter which ones I add first, which ones do you think I want to add first? I want to add, no, I'm not first. I'm going to add this one and this one. What does that work out to be? Three. So two plus one plus three quarters plus three eighths. I'm going to add those two, bring it down here. Now I'm going to worry about my fractions. Common denominator is eight. So instead of saying three quarters plus three, it's like I can say six eighths plus three eighths, which is nine eighths, which is equal to one and one eighth. What do I have to finally add that to? Three. And my final answer, therefore, uh, equals four and one eighth. Is that right? Did I do that right? Right. Check your work. If I check this, am I actually going to use mixed fractions? No. I'm going to go 3 over 2 multiplied by 11 over 4. I'm just going to change that to improper, which is equal to 33 over 8. How many 8s are there in 33? There's 4. That's 32 8s. But since I have 33 8s, that's an extra 8 left over. My final answer is indeed correct, 4 and 1 8.